وبركاته إن الحمد لله حمدا حمدا ونشكر شكرا شكرا ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مذل ومن يذلل فلا حاديا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي اللهم ربي زدنا علما ورزقنا فهما سبحانك لا علم لنا الا ما علمتنا انك انت العليم الحكيم اللهم ارنا حقا حقا ورزقنا اتباع وارنا باطل باطل ورزقنا اجتنابه اللهم وفقنا بعلم وعمل بما تحب وترضى اللهم ارزقني اخلاص في القول والعمل may this session be a means of salvation for the sins we have committed may every second of this session be an investment we make for our akhirah for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to admit us into his paradise amin ya Allah ya rabbal alamin there is an Arabic saying which goes يَمُوتُ الْفَتَى مِنْ أَسْرَةٍ بِلِسَانِ وَلَيْسَ الْيَمُوتُ مَرْعُ مِنْ أَثْرَةِ الرِّجْلِ إِذَا نَطَقُ السَّفِيهُ فَلَا تُجِبْهُ فَخَيْرُ مِنْ عِجَابَتِكْ سُكُوتُ That a man died due to tripping from his own tongue. He tripped from his own tongue. As such, he passed away. And he did not pass away due to him tripping and falling from his own leg. While, while and when a fool speaks, don't respond to him. And the best of the response to such individual is silence. Silence is the best answer for such individual. In our last sessions, in emulating the approach of the Prophet in captivating the society, we had an opportunity, I had an opportunity to share with you on the leader of our nation, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How did Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spoke politely when he became the Prophet and it started from a very early age. The people where the people who were, he, he revolved with, the people revolving around him was the main reason why he spoke politely and particularly highlighting to you in my last, last session, Barakah, the foster mother of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She instilled in him words of kindness, words where there is gentleness in it. And she was the one who guided in every single words of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from a, from a very early childhood. And no doubt that I started my lesson by stating that Barakah was the foster mother, the one who nursed Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So back then he was a baby, baby Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She was amongst the person who nursed Prophet Muhammad. There were few others who nursed Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Amongst them was Suwaiba. And the other famous person who nursed Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was Halima binti Al-Harith. It has been recorded in the Seerah. In the Kathir, there are few narrations, and today the narration where I would like to share with you is by Abdullah ibn Ja'far, radiallahu ta'ala, who narrated a very long narration which is recorded by Abu Ya'la in Mujma al Zawaid and also in Sirah al Nabawiyah with the explanation of Al Khushayni by the way of Ibn Ishaq on the story of 
Halima bin to Al Haris taking Prophet Muhammad or baby Muhammad as uh, under her care and to nurse him for a period of time away from the city life of Mecca. And prior to Prophet Muhammad وسلم, departing out of Mecca, the one who was nursing him was Barakah. So Barakah, when she nursed him, right, she gave, uh, she not only nursed him, but she took care of him very well and literally transmitted the Barakah. Uh, Barakah literally uh, took care of her Suwaiba and also the mother of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, Amina. And first, uh, it was from the culture, a custom and culture of the Arabs that they would raise their children out of the city life of Mecca. So that the children the child, the infant, is able to and strengthen its immunity system from a very young age. And that is the very reason why they would send the the, 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 the newborn baby out of the town. And there are a number of reasons why they would send amongst it is they wanted the child to be raised in a pure and healthy environment. While the infant mortality was very high during that time, uh, so to preserve and protect the child, they removed him from congregation, you know, where people would gather together and civilization so that they, there is only a few people interacting with the child. Because as we know, plagues and diseases are carried by people today with uh, the COVID-19 which is still uh, with us. So this increases the chance of its survival. So what they would do back then, the, when they received the newborn baby, they would then send the baby out into an open area, open desert, where it is able to build its system. And they wanted the stamina in the child and make them uh, adapt to the rough life of Mecca. So even though life in Mecca was very tough they wanted to raise their child in a harder environment so they become accustomed and can adapt easily to the hardship of Mecca certainly children adapt much more easily than adult Allah has made us in such a way that when we adult if we are used to a standard lifestyle to lower it is very hard. But from the beginning, right, uh, life would be very difficult to bear. Even though this lower standard is the standard for many people, so it's human nature that children adapt to circumstances. And this show that the Quraysh had clever uh, long-term planning. They wanted their children to live under difficulty at a young age. So Makkah appears their luxury. And also amongst the reason why they would send their infant out in an early age is because that the tribes that raise the children are known for their fluency in Arabic. So they would speak a very fluent Arabic. So in city life, they have a mixture of language. They have, they do not completely speak the profound language of Arabic. There was a mixture of words being uh, in uh, being uh, exchanged. Means in every sentence, there are some other foreign words has been uh, inserted in their sentence. So they want to have the purity of language. So it is only best that they would expose them into a desert area where the language is being preserved. So this is amongst the reason why Prophet, uh, the, 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 the elite Quraysh of them, right, they would send their children out into uh, desert areas for them to grow for a period of time. So here it is 
narrated by Abdullah ibn Ja'far that uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam right, uh, was taken uh, under the care of Halima binti Harith. Now what we know is Halima to Sa'diya. Why am I coming out with a new name, Halima to Ibn Harith? Now her actual name is Halima binti Harith. And the tribe name of hers is Sa'ad ibn Bakr. So this is where people would ascribe her to the tribe and not to her father's name. So her name is Halima bin Haris. Her tribe name is Sa'ad ibn Bakr. Sa'ad ibn Bakr is known for the purity of the Arabic language. Because in one of the narration of Prophet Wasallam, he takes pride that he grew up in the area of Sa'ad ibn Bakr. So the story goes as you might be even familiar with this particular story that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu was taken into account and Halima herself narrates that uh, she was going through her, her entire family was going through a period of poverty. No doubt that they were living in the middle of the desert. They were Bedouins. So they had insufficient wages or insufficient money for themselves. As such, she and her husband decided to travel to the city of Makkah with the intention of taking care, taking to their care, uh, taking care of uh, infant and growing, uh, basically nurturing the child and nursing, importantly nursing the child. And she was able to uh, nurse the child as she have just recently given birth to her own child so she had the supply uh, of milk in herself uh, for her to uh, for her to nurse uh, a child or take a child under her care and uh, grow that, that particular child and, and nurture him and instill values upon him for a period of two years and this was her culture which was known back then so then in the long narration it states that Halima and the husband and the children all packed up and got ready and then they started to depart out of their houses from the village together with a group of other families and women who also have the same intention to go to Mecca, find for a child uh, and then bring bring them back and they will be, it's a paid service, it, it, it was a paid service back then. So everyone packed and left. And as such, Halima binti uh, Haris together with the husband and the children and the newborn baby all packed and they left. They got a camel who was very weak and was not producing sufficient milk. And they rode on their donkey. The name of the donkey was Qamra. Al Qamra uh, is, 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 is a color between green and white. And it is being stated that the animal where they rode in wrote on it was uh, wounded it ha uh, it has a wound as such it did not have the ability to travel fast compared to the other uh, animal of the other families they they all went ahead and went fa faster and quicker compared to Halima's family so the others they reached to Mecca ahead of Halima's family and and there are also narration this is a very long narration that uh, the night before them arriving into the valley of Mecca they encamped themselves in the outskirts of Mecca before entering into Mecca so that night was the most terrible night of their life because the camel could not produce milk the donkey was a uh, wound and uh, far and beyond it was she could not have proper supply of milk to provide for her own child the newborn baby of Halima and the whole night you, know, you might have experienced I have my own child that when the, the, the when there isn't a sufficient supply for a baby when the, when the when the baby needs milk he'll automatically cry and that whole night that they could not have a peaceful sleep 
So as such, the next very morning, with the intention of receiving a child from a reputable family, the elite family of Quraysh, they walked in, they stepped into the sacred valley of Makkah and hunting, finding for a family who would provide them with their child and the 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 pay master would be normally the father or the man of the household so whenever they would want to find for a infant a child they will find for not only the mother the father first and then they will see that who amongst the men has the credential and credibility to pay more so as such they went in search but the fact that her donkey was good it 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 literally uh, made them arrive later compared to the other families of Sa'id ibn Bakr who have already arrived ahead of her so she was left with not much choice except for a few and every single family every single woman who went into the household of Amina they turned the they turned baby Muhammad down because he was a yatim, he was an orphan. You say, what good can this family do? Because the pay master, who is the father, is unable to pay. Uh, they they don't believe that the 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 grandfather, who was Abdul Muttalib or uncle, could pay that amount of money because normally the money would be paid by the father. So as such, everybody turned this baby out. They they turned them. They they turned Amina away. And all the other women, they got their, uh, they have taken under their con, uh, the un, under their care, uh, the infant of the respective families, and they have received their wages. So they all prepared to leave, leaving Halima binti Al Haris with no choice, and she have she was she 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 didn't have any other choice except to take the only option which was to bring back baby Muhammad back back to her own home, back to her village. Number one, she didn't have choice. Number two, it has been stated by the Mu'arrikhu, the historian, that they were people of good heart. They had good heart, they had good intention. So when 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 they when Halima went around the entire Makkah asking every household that whether uh, has anyone is willing to let their infant out uh, to, to, to be taken care by uh, herself and her family. Majority of them say that they have already uh, had a contract and agreement with the rest, such and such women and they have already taken, to their, uh, taken under their care. So then she didn't want, she, she felt, em she didn't want to feel embarrassed. So as such, what she did was she left with no option. She went to Amina with the intention that uh, after discussing with her husband that who, who knows that God may bless us. God may bless us with this particular child and may bring us goodness from him. So this is when she took Prophet Muhammad وسلم, without her knowing that he is going to turn to be a prophet and without her knowing without her knowing that this baby is a baby who's full of blessing so amazingly shortly after she have taken baby muhammad into under her care allah changed the dynamic of her entire life the donkey which was wound allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by his will and grace allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cured the wound and the donkey started to speed up immediately after she had taken Prof, uh, baby Muhammad and the camel which could not produce sufficient milk started to produce plenty amount of milk that night and her chest started to engorge and she was able to feed baby Muhammad and the other children of hers and while this was being experienced by them the husband and her were both of them were amazed by 
the 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 things which was happening around her and at this junction her husband says a very profound statement ya halima what a blessed soul have we taken to our care what a blessed soul have we taken under our care and that's when they start to realize about blessing the concept of baraka where me you and me a lot of us take baraka for granted the concept of blessing which is from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala baraka has been translated as blessing but the fascinating thing about this word baraka is ascribed to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah says in the quran fata fatabaraka allah ahsan al khaliqin so blessed is allah the best of the creator in chapter number 23 surah mu'minun verse number 14 allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in another verse tabarakta ya dhal jalali wal ikram blessed are you o owner of majesty and honor allah says in another verse tabaraka alladhi bi yadihi al mulku wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir blessed is he in whose hand is the dominance of the heaven and earth baraka belongs to allah but the root meaning of baraka yadullu ala nima wa ziyada yadullu ala nima wa ziyada number one, what it means is something which will last forever and ever number one is al baqa something which will last forever number two, something that which continuously starts to increase a ziyada so it has the permanency and at the same time it piles up it accumulates it increases one above the other and in summary it means perpetually increasing and exponen- uh, exponentially benefiting blessing barakah can be in different things it can be in a person it can be in a place it can be in an object it can be even in an occasion and prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam it's he himself is a blessing the owner of blessing is allah and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have said blessing in our beloved prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and whoever takes his knowledge with rights then the person will also be blessed and by the will of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he will bless not only the person but also the things around him and there are certain occasions there are blessing and there are in certain objects and places there are also blessing and scholars further elaborate this term baraka it is be, it is being stated by one of the scholars that it is that it is beneficent force from allah that flows through a physical and spiritual fear in the form of one of the three that it is a beneficent force from allah that flows through a physical and spiritual fear in the form of one of the three things number one prosperity number two protection and number three fulfillment these are the three areas where you're able to feel barak and from one of the three i've chosen protection today once prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam educated his grandson hasan ibn ali hasan is the most beloved grandson to prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam once said that inna ibn adam sayyid indeed this son of mine he will be a leader so just like by na kaum that he will reconcile between two nations so hasan is one of the Uh, beloved grandson of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and what he does is he gets his grandson on his lap and then guides him to words he say a word which is very familiar to you and familiar to me where we frequently hear in the subuh prayer in the mosque 
which is kunut nazila which goes Allah mahdini fi man hadayt O oh Allah guide me as how you have guided them wa'afini fi man afayt and provide me with good health as how you have pro- granted others with good health wa tawallani fi man tawallayt and keep me protected as how you have keep or granted others protection wa barik fi ma a'tayt ya Allah bless appoint me appoint the things which you have granted upon me bless appoint the thing which you have granted upon me and what does it mean Allah is the one he is the owner of barakah and at the same time he is the only one can place barakah in the things around us to further elaborate I would like to share with you an example from the life of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam once a man walked into the household of Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam with the intention of embracing Islam with the intention of embracing Islam so as such Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam prepared for him a dish before even conversing pre- prepares for him a dish so Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam prepares the dish and bring to him and then he starts to eat he takes the first bite he takes the second bite he takes the third bite four five six seven he continuously eat and then comes in the next person at the doorstep of our beloved prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam house say assalamu alaikum you know it was a companion he walked in rasulullah permitted him he came in and then he saw the food rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam permitted him to eat and he took one bite and say shabir i'm full and the man was so amazed he say you know how is it possible that i continuously keep on eating and i do not feel full where this man came in and he ate he only took one bite and he's full looking at him he's very hungry he say fadaka that man fasmillah he mention the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he consume the food where else when a person does not mention the name of Allah because the owner of barakah is Allah when a person mentions the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah will set the blessing in each and every single thing in each and every single thing when you say bismillah that is a key towards blessing because you view and me have believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran walau anna ahla al-qura amanu wa attaqaw la fatahna alayhim barakatim min as-sama in surah al-a'raf chapter number 7 verse number 96 and if only the people of the city had believed and fear Allah we would have certainly opened the blessings from the heaven and earth but they deny the messenger so we seize them for what they were earning is having the belief in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that a thing can be little but yet a person who believes in allah and who's cautious and fulfills the guideline of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ease his affair and will give continuity in the thing he does with an increment which will be just growing one above the other in another hadith which has been narrated by Sahal Ibn Sa'ad that a man once complained to Prophet about his poverty at this, the Prophet said that when you enter your house, when you enter your house, regardless of whether there is someone in the house or there isn't anyone, number one, say Assalamu Alaikum. Number one, say Assalamu Alaikum. Number two, you say Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Salutation upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and number three, recite 
Surah Ikhlas Qul huwa Allahu ahad Allahu samad Lam yalid wa lam yulad Wa lam yakun lahu kufwan ahad and it had, and, and and continues in the hadith that he did as per guidance by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Allah rain sustenance down upon him until he spent upon his neighbors and relatives. Allah sent blessings upon him, having the certainty not in me or not in you. We are all creations of Allah, having the certainty in him the confidence in him the belief in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the owner of baraka you be you you and i be thinking that this is um this is the amount of money i'm earning is not sufficient no having the belief in allah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will place blessing in it and he will only place blessing when your bismillah and my bismillah is full of faith we don't say the word merely because our father and mother have just taught us Bismillah. No, we need to have certainty that we are invoking a point, the Malikul Muluk, the king of all the kings, the one, the owner of everything. And having that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who can send and increase goodness in that particular subject or object where we are about to embark upon let us let us manifest this lesson into action that the next time we are going to perform something we want to feel the blessing say bismillah from the bottom of our heart and having the belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would spread send the goodness in the actions we will embark a point hopefully what i have delivered today is beneficial for you and beneficial for me every goodness is only from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every evil is from myself and then from shaitan aqulu ma tasma'oon subhanak allahumma wa bihamdika ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والأسر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وهم يصالحات وتواصى بالحق وتواصى بصبر ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا يا مولانا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم وتب الصالحات أعمالنا وآجالنا يا الله يا رب العالمين بفضلك سبحان ربك رب العزة يما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Thank you.